It's Madden NFL 24. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. All that and more coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to AccraSure Stadium on the north shore of the Steel City, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Up in the booth with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and kick off straight ahead, CD. What's one thing that you're going to have your eye on? I think about what the great coaches of the past always said, the key to any ball game. Can you rush theirs and protect yours? Well, in this case, both of these teams get after the quarterbacks. I'm watching the pass rush. A kicker, Chris Boswell, has it ready to go, and we are underway from Pittsburgh. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. So here are the Titans now for their first drive. And they will be led out by a guy certainly still trying to prove himself here in the league, the young rookie quarterback. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment, running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. So the drive's going to start with Pollard, and he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. The defense thought they had that play covered, but it still got driven backward by those blockers. Those types of plays are a key part of any team's offensive game plan. It all starts up front in the trenches. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Going to run again here with Pollard. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Pollard going to try the right side. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage is in lockdown mode everywhere. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Levis looking to throw. Aaron it out, looking for Ridley. And he's got it inside the ten. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, it's very early here, but maybe circle that one for later. A third and long conversion, Charles, and that sets them up first and goal. And how about the way they got it done? You just mentioned third and long. I'm looking at it from the defense's perspective. They had the advantage. That's what you want to put an offense in, and they let them slip away. Now, if you're the offensive guys, love what you just got done there. Continue on this drive. 
First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. They'll run with Pollard. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Here's where we need to see some tenacity from this defense because they've been pushed right down the field on this opening drive. They've got to find some way to push back, and that's a good first step. Second and goal from inside the five. Here's Levis. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Levis from the gun. A throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. The Steeler defense locked in, forcing an upcoming fourth down. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything, forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Folk's kick is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So here are the Steelers now to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly as both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. They'll start on the ground here on first down. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. A first carry for Najee Harris. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. It's Jeffrey Simmons that time who got in to record the sack. The start of this game shaping up nicely on that visiting sideline. Yeah, how about that? You get your points on the opening drive, then you get a big sack there on third down, and you make the home crowd go, shh. There is a hush indeed. On is the punter, Johnston, now as he sends this one away. Fielded just inside the 30. A very good return that time. 18 yards, and it'll be Titan football. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10.
They'll run with Pollard to begin the drive. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 44 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 27. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. The false start backs him up five. First and 15. Here's Pollard again. And he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down to the 31. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Here's Spears on second down. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. So after some runs, now they'll throw with Levis. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. And now a fake there on the jet sweep as they'll give to Pollard. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. I thought they were on to something with their play call and kind of went in reverse a little bit, threw it on first down, then ran it on second down. Not successful either way. What play call do they come up with here on this important third down try? Now Levis. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Tony Pollard from eight yards out. And the Titans are able to add on to that lead. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an... And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review. So they had it right. Nick Folk for the point after. He's got it, and now it's a 10-0 lead here in the opening quarter. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends with a Tennessee score. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. 
They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10 nothing early as they've got it first and 10. Harris starts the drive on the ground, fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Second and nine now from the 21. Now it's Fields. Pass complete, George Pickens with it. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. And they'll fake the handoff. Now Fields. Oh, he had a man open. He overshot him. It's incomplete. Looked like they were set up defensively in a zone coverage, but somehow they found a seam because that receiver all alone by right, that should have been a touchdown, but somehow this ball's overthrown. Here's second and 10. Fields. He'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryer move. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 and a first down. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Again, Fields. Here's Fryermuth again. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Second down and four. Play action. It's Fields. And it's a fumble. It's picked up by the Titans. And they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. Well, we know he's got the speed to get downfield, Charles, but there's the negative side, a little loose with the football that time. And that's normal, especially when you have his type of talents because you feel like you're into the open field and maybe you don't feel the people who are around you or closing in. All quarterbacks have to do extra ball security drills with the way the game's played now because defenses, they attack the football as much as they attack the runner. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down and that will not be ruled a fumble. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Off play action, Fields. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage, and that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Ten nothing the score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. As they've got it as we resume action. 
Meanwhile, Fields throw taken in by Watkins here. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. Seems as if the passing attack's starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. I think the defense surprised him there with that blitz on first down, but give him credit. Stayed cool under pressure and still found a way through the extra rushers for positive yardage. Well done. Now second and three. To Jefferson on the slam. And the Steelers are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Was that a design pass, or what was that? It was built into the play call. He had the opportunity to either hand it inside, keep it himself to run it, or do what he just did. Throw that pass inside, hitting a receiver on the run. Harris is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage as they'll tackle him at the three. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. Now Fields. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Now Fields on third and goal. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Quez Watkins from three yards out. And the Steelers are back within a score. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Boswell good with the extra point, and that'll cut it to three at Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Offense back out there, and we shine the spotlight on the Memphis man, Tony Pollard. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. They'll go with Pollard here on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Well, they go play action. Here's Levis. Calvin Ridley and finally marked down at the 42-yard line. It's a gain of 34. Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. 
So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. A give to Pollard running left. Breaks through the contact. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. 67 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? Now they nab the rookie there for the five-yard penalty. So much going through his head. You know it just has to be, right? All of his assignments and realizing every game he plays, one of the better players in the league will be opposite him. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Play action now, Levis. DeAndre Hopkins making the catch. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Call that a very strong gain of 24. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Now this is going to be a quarterback draw. And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Will Levis. A three-yard run as he kept it himself. And the Titans are able to stretch out their lead. Yeah, this is pretty similar to the Wildcat plays that were bouncing around the league circa 2008 or so. The idea here, just snap it right to the guy you want to run with it. In theory, you're getting yourself an extra blocker. And here, that Wildcat runner is your quarterback. And he takes it into the end zone. Full connects on the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Five plays there on that drive. And the drive was capped off with a touchdown run by Will Levis. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. No return here for Patterson, so they'll begin things at the 25-yard line. And the Steelers set to take the field. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Harris running straight ahead, and he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? And the Steelers on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and seven. Here's Fields. That is caught, and he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, you can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They hand this off to Harris. Shreds him with a stiff arm. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 
The Steelers able to pick up 18 yards there. 3-4 defense, and that O-line really dominated the D-line on that play. And think of it this way. With a 3-4, you have a natural bubble over each guard because those guys don't have defenders over them. Oftentimes, if you want to run up the middle, they can get upfield and get on the linebackers right now, and that gives the running back a heck of a chance to get into the secondary. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 more yards there and another first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. On the give, this is Harris. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Warren will try the right side. There's a nice move. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll try to run with Harris. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Najee Harris taking it in from two yards out. And the Steelers have cut it back within a score. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Extra point put through by Boswell. And the lead's down to a field goal at 17-14. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Offense back out there, and we shine the spotlight on the Memphis man, Tony Pollard. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Titans. Tony Pollard with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Titans are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. One play, 80 yards. Pretty easy drive to recap. <laughs> it certainly is, but not so easy to execute. Starting on your own 20, you want something to kickstart your drive and get it off to a nice start. They went for the whole thing and got it. That's a great way to send a message to the opposing team. On for the extra point is Folk. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Fields. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Now a second and ten. Back to throw. Fields. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one a gain of 20 and a first down. Well, this hasn't really been a first half to remember on either side of the ball. But I think this kind of makes this an important drive. You'd love to get this back to a one-score game if you can. And that's good work there to get some yardage here and pick up the first down. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. This duo locked in 14 yards there and a first down. To throw his fields. Steps away to his left. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Jaleel Johnson showing his strength and quickness there. A loss of four. So this has been a lot like a tennis match, hasn't it? Back and forth. Both of these offenses have their way so far. So maybe the question isn't who's going to score the most points in this game. Maybe it's who's going to get some stops. Yeah, absolutely. And that sack, finally a first step in the right direction for a stop. Now Fields, and it's knocked away and incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play, but sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one, weren't able to do so. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Fields now to throw. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the left hash mark, this eight. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. It's picked up by the Titans. And they will set up shop at their own 41-yard line. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And as a result, it'll be Titan football on the turnover on downs. Offense back out there, and we shine the spotlight on the Memphis man, Tony Pollard. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. Levis. That's complete to Traylon Burks. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts. 
as he'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Levis to throw on first and 10 here. Throw right side caught by Ridley. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Give him 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he's got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. He hit his first. Now this one from 48 yards away. Folks' kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So able to add on to their first half lead here, Charles, forcing the miscue with a fumble and then turning that into three points. Yeah, and more than happy to accept any mistakes the other side is willing to make. No problem. You turn it over, we'll take that, and we'll use it to expand our lead. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we reach halftime here with the visiting Titans taking the lead into intermission. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a strong first half for running back Tony Pollard. He found the end zone twice, once on the ground and once in the passing game as he proved he's anything but a one-dimensional running back. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Steelers going to get the football first here, trailing on the scoreboard as we are back underway on EA Sports. Taken at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. And they're on the short end of the scoreboard here. Charles, what adjustments, if any, do you think they need to make for the second half? We're paraphrasing the gold medal hockey winning coach Herb Brooks. I just say you continue to play your game. Throw the ball. They had success doing it in the first half. So make sure you keep getting the ball to your playmakers a little bit more to the perimeter perhaps. But above all, play your game. Got his man. It's Warren. And they worked this well upfield across the 45. 25 yards there on the catch and run. A great job there, and that old cliche, taking what the defense gives you, comes right into play. Nothing too out of the ordinary about the throw. Just a little dump off over the middle. But what it is out of the ordinary is what he did with it after the catch. Not only did he grab the ball, but how about the significant yardage he picked up after he pulled it in? So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Back to throw. Fields. Sideline throw, it's complete. 
And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Looking to throw on second down, Fields. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Fields, we know he has the good mobility. He flashes it there as he scrambles for the first down. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Harris going to get it again on second down. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Now third down is looming, a pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. Boswell's kick is good, and that gets him back within 10. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. We've got a close game. The offense has played well, but right now they've got to keep their foot on the gas. And that carries with it an extra bit of pressure, doesn't it? As much fun as they're having right now, they're locked in, really clicking on all cylinders. They also know that if they ever miss a chance to put points on the board, they've actually put their team in jeopardy. And that's not how you want to play the game. It's supposed to be complimentary football, offense, defense. But today, it's all offense for them. Yeah, they've been playing with a sense of urgency. It's probably going to need to continue. Alex Highsmith there on the tackle. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Levis back to throw. The hookup on the right side to Hopkins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Running right, it's Pollard. Oh, good move. And he'll be taken down at about the 45. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And they'll come up second and seven. Now Levis. It's complete, Burks. 
Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. They run straight ahead here with Pollard. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 163 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. It's been an excellent day for him running the football, no doubt, as he continues to soar well past 100 yards. Yeah, it almost feels like he can just grab his briefcase and head home after putting in a full day's work at the office, doesn't it? First and 10, it's Levis. Throw left side complete. That's Hopkins. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Pollard will take it up the gut. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. From the five now, second and a yard. Here's Levis. And he's got it. And the Titans are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a first down. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. This is obviously a critical sequence for this defense if they want to stay in this game. Down two scores already. They give up a touchdown here. That'll make things really difficult for their offense moving forward. A second down throw from Levis. Buying time to... And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Will Levis taking it in from four yards out. And his guys now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. We've seen this already from him in this game. Second time, he's into the end zone with a rushing touchdown. So the head coach is going to have to have a meeting with the owner this week. You know why? He's got to let the owner know, I know you wrote the check for his arm, but we're going to make him a part of our running game, too. This guy can do it all. Let's see where he takes us. Extra point up and good by Folk. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. 
Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones at a first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly, and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Fields. Flush to his right. And he's going to go down again. Credit the sack there to Arden Key. I think we've seen this before. If someone's down three scores, that situation there, it's just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out, not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now it's Fields. Open man, that's the tight end, Fryermuth. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. A crazy sequence here, a huge gain that time, but it still leaves him well short for fourth down. I don't know how many times, not just in my playing career, but you and I working together, have we ever heard a coach say, you know, I just don't have that play on my call sheet. <laughs> and that's really what we had here. That was a big hole they were trying to get out of. Yeah, big gain, still a ways to go, though. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. They'll start on the ground with Spears. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. Now a give here to Pollard. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think you continue to do so. He'll get this to about the 38. Well, they always talk about playing great team defense, and that was an excellent example right there. Everyone on assignment, no one in the wrong spot, everyone filling their gaps. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. Slot man moves right. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. 
It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. The offense on third down, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This time it's third and three. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And now out come the Steelers. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. He's got room past the 30. And he'll take this all the way up to the 38-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive lineman. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. Now a first down throw, Fields. He finds his man complete. That's Warren. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and a yard. A shotgun snap, Fields. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. He certainly isn't looking at the scoreboard out there because, to me, all he's concerned about is analyzing the field and making most of the time left in this game. Deficit's still there, but he's starting to hit them with some big plays. On first down, Fields. Now they go screen. It's complete. They hold him to only two there on the screen. It's second down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Here's a second and eight. Now Fields. To the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. Now they try to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A good pickup there, 21 yards. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. To the air again, Fields. And that ball is caught by Washington. Touchdown, Steelers. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Steelers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. 
So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Boswell good with the extra point, and the lead is trimmed down to 10. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Levis now on first and 10. This one caught by Ridley. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Second and six, just inside the 30. Levis looking to throw. Dancing to his left. And Levis with a smart move, sliding down after picking up the first. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. So well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. So the completion good for just three. And that will bring up second down. Well, they go play action. Here's Levis. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Back to throw. It's Levis. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And the passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? It'll be a handoff to Pollard. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself. And that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Now second and five. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Throwing now, here's Levis. Ah, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. 
Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they like some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. So now the Steelers down by 10, a minute 46 to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. Here's Fields. Finding Watkins. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been revved up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defenses have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. A two timeout still remaining, but scoring quickly, a must. It's first and 10. Uh, nowhere for Fields to turn, and down he goes. Jeffrey Simmons in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. It has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Now Fields. And that is incomplete. Well, this is getting close to a no-win situation now. They've got one final shot. They're on their end of the field, and it's fourth and long. This might require a little extra razzle-dazzle to get it done. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. They snap it to Fields. Able to find the open man. That's complete. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. Well, they need to score and score quick. One timeout remaining. Final minute, first and 10. All eyes on Fields. He'll hit Watkins on the crossing route. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. Here's first and ten. Back to throw, Fields. That is caught at the seven. And he takes this one into the end zone. And all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Let's 
So still a chance with just over 20 seconds to go, but they need to get this one back, no doubt. And the Titans are going to come up with it. And that should just about do it. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. Out come the Titans now. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. Levis takes a knee here, and that should just about do it. Well, taking that knee, maybe just a sigh of relief. They withstood a big fourth quarter comeback. Able to hold on, though. Certainly looked like they had things going their way, didn't it? And in the fourth quarter, they had to just hold on. As you said, furious assault on them. But they were able to get it done, take a knee, and head to the locker room with a win. A couple more minutes, and maybe the outcome of this one, Charles, would have been different. But ultimately, time runs out on the comeback, so it falls short. And they hold on to win this by just one possession. Not the fourth quarter they wanted, but they did earn the win, and they'll be happy about that, and they should be. Now they're going to go back to practice, see what they can do to prevent a future lead from slipping away like this one was. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. And with that, we say...